this was a story that we heard from Scotland last week, and this is a long debated, discussed issue uh, regarding providing free sanitary products for women. I mean, the, the, the update in Scotland doesn't necessarily change anything here, but is it an ongoing discussion that you're having? It's something, obviously, we're watching with interest. I mean, the thing to remember with the Scotland is that the bill that's come forward is a private member's bill. And to be frank, in certain parts, the bill's quite vague. So there's no commitment over how anything's going to be funded or who's going to pay for it. In fact, I think it's Section 10 of the bill states that the Scottish government can make payments to the appropriate bodies, such as councils, um, as they see fit. But it's putting an obligation on councils and public bodies to provide the free products. So there is concern, and that was expressed during the debate in the Scottish Parliament, about how this is going to be funded, because the financial memorandum that came with the bill, the Scottish Government has disputed and said they actually believe the real cost is two and a half times what it was in the financial memorandum, that the cost to Scotland could be about £24 million. Would that potential cost, or it obviously wouldn't be the same, but would any high potential cost put you off bringing it over here? Well, I think, and I've done an interview before, um, I, did, I did an interview, I think it was last year with Aaron on this, um, and one of the things I've said, and I still stand by this, is in relation to period poverty, I, th- I think that's wider um, than just period poverty. It's about income poverty as well. And um, As a government, we've been taking various measures um, over the last few years to try and deal with income poverty. The Minister for Policy and Reform, Chris Thomas, has been working on various initiatives and I think this feeds into that. It's not just about picking off individual um, things and individual, you know, so for instance, it ties in with food banks and so on, where you've got food banks. Why are people using them? What's the, you know, what's the reason they're having to use them? Same with period poverty. Why are people in that situation in the first place? And I think it ties into a bigger picture and we should be addressing the root causes rather than picking off things in isolation. Whilst that I'm sure is true, it does feed into other areas period poverty is something that nobody can choose so whilst there are factors that will affect you this comes down to a whole other debate on whether women should be paying for it in the first place well, it does indeed, um, and for you know, and for some people, the cost can be, depending upon their menstrual cycle and so on, can be quite horrific um, during a during a, a year. But I think it does feed in. But again, the focus in Scotland um, has always been around the period poverty issue, and they're engaging with the fair trade organisation to help deliver services on the ground. Um, and I think there is a wider debate about whether sanitary products should be just generally free. But obviously, one of the things from health is if we went down that route, there is quite a large cost attached. And people would have to accept that if we did go down that route, we'd have to look at other services to curtail in order to pay for it.